This is part 23 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to test ASP.NET Web API token-based authentication using Fiddler. In our previous video, we have registered a new user using our register.html page. We are storing the new registrations in a SQL Server database. So within SQL Server, in our employee DB database, along with the employees table, we also have the identity tables. In this ASP.NET users, we have the new registrations. So if we right click on this table and select this option, select top thousand rows, we can see the new registrations. Notice the email column. We have a user with email a at a.com. The username is also the email address. If we scroll all the way to the right, Notice the username column. It's the same as that of the email address. And we also have hashed password. So let's use this username and password and generate an access token. Now let's flip to Fiddler. Let's click on the Composer tab. At the moment, our application is running at this port number, 34838. So let's issue a POST request to that URL. So we want to issue a POST request to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon the port number at which our application is running. And we want to POST to slash token. And within the request body, we want to specify username and password. So username equals a at a.com ampersand password equals the password that we have specified during registration which is test123 exclamation and we also need to specify a grant type so ampersand grant underscore type and grant type is password so basically using this grant type we are specifying that we are supplying password and in return we want an access token so let's execute this Notice the request has completed successfully with status code 200. Now when I double click on this, look at the response that we got from the server. We got a signed access token. We also have the date and time when the token is issued, when it is going to expire. The username is a at a.com and the token type is para. So to get an access token, we issue a POST request to slash token and in the request body, we specify username, password and grant type equals password and in return, we get a signed access token from the server. Let's now understand how this access token is generated. We have not written any code whatsoever that validates the username and password that we have supplied and generate an access token. All this code is provided out of the box by ASP.NET Web API when we have created a new Web API project. To see the code that validates username and password and generates access token, in app underscore start folder, we have this file startup.auth.cs. Within this file, we have configure auth function. Within this function, we are creating an instance of OAuth authorization server options class. And in here, we have that slash token endpoint to which we are posting username and password. We are also specifying the token expiry using access token expire time span property. And in this case, the token expires 14 days after it is issued. So if you look at the access token that we got from the server, notice it is issued on 2nd December and it expires on 16th December. So it expires 14 days after it is issued. We can always change this property to meet our application needs. So for example, let's say we want the token to expire one hour after it is issued. I can say time span from hours and let's add one hour. So we want the token to be valid only for one hour. So let's give our solution a build and reissue a request from Fiddler. So let's execute this request. Request completed successfully with status code 200 and look at issued and expires. The token is issued at 1510 and it's going to expire at 1610, one hour after it is issued. The obvious next question that comes to our mind is, where is the code that validates the username and password that we have supplied? Now, if you look at this provider property, we are initializing this with a new instance of application OAuth provider class. If we right click on this and go to definition, within this class, we have this method, grant resource owner credentials, to which we are passing 
OAuth grant resource on a credentials context object. This object has got the username and password. User manager tries to find a user with the specified username and password. If it doesn't find any user, it returns an error. The username or password is incorrect. If it finds a user, then it creates a claims identity object, which in turn is passed to authentication ticket, which is going to create a ticket, and that is passed to validated method, which generates the access token. Now let's use this access token and retrieve employees data by calling the get method of the employees controller. So let's go to the composer tab. We want to issue a get request. With a get request, we don't need to have a request body and we want to issue a get request to slash API slash employees. At the moment, we are not passing the access token. So when we execute this, notice we get 401 unauthorized as the response. That's because the employees controller is decorated with authorized attribute. This means every request needs to be authenticated. So with every request, we need to pass the access token. And to pass the access token, we are going to make use of authorization header. So let's flip to Fiddler one more time. And on the Composer tab, we want to pass the access token. So let's use the authorization header. And the value for this is going to be bearer. So basically, this word tells that we are sending a bearer token. And let's copy the access token. So here we have the access token. Let's right click, copy that, and paste that in a notepad. And let's cut just the access token value and specify that on the Composer tab. All right, so we are passing the access token as well. So let's execute this. Notice the request completed successfully with status code 200, and we get the employee's data as expected. So to pass the access token from the client to the server, we use the authorization header. At the moment, we only have the registration page implemented. In our next video, we'll discuss implementing the login page. Thank you for listening, and have a great day.